when I was a kid in China, we ate a lot of one-course meals. The food would be cooked and served in a single pot or wok, and then eaten over rice family style. So the whole family can come over here and eat the same meal and the same course. In fact, you go to Chinese restaurant nowadays for lunch, you can order a lot of variety of one dish meal. For lunch, whether it's over rice or noodle. This particular dish, I'm gonna do as an example. Black bean chicken with fresh asparagus. Meat and vegetable, all in one. Now here, I have some chicken. Now, normally, when I have chicken, I normally bone the whole chicken myself to save money. But when you do it at home, you can, to save time and money, you can buy the one that's already skinned and bone. I'm gonna cut it up. If you want to make it big pieces, you can butterfly this like this, butterflies. Open it up, and then you can tenderize a little bit if you want. And then you cut it right in half, okay? Put it together. If you don't want to cut it in half, uh, no big deal. Put them all together, and you can cut them all up like this. Now, everybody remember, when you cut chicken in a cutting board, always make sure immediately wash your cutting board, your knife, and your towel before you cut anything else. But this particular dish, we're going to cook this immediately, right away. Transfer it like that, right here. We don't have to worry about it right away, but when you do it at home, make sure to clean everything up, okay? Now, all we have to do is marinate the chicken a little bit with the chopstick. Put a tiny bit of cornstarch, a tiny bit of soy sauce. Always marinate it in a bowl. If you cannot find a bowl, ah, no big deal, put it on a plate. And then serve a tiny bit of rice wine. <coughs> tiny bit of rice wine. And then let it sit for about half an hour, up to two hours. If you want, you can even do it, marinate it overnight. Set it aside and put it right here. If you want, you can put a tiny bit more cornstarch. Help to seal in the juice, okay? Give this nice smooth texture. Make sure they're nice and evenly cold and set aside. You can even do it here, you can do it either here, much faster, okay, and much easier to do. That means you have a choice. Put it right over here, and then you're ready. We have heat up a wok, this is how you save time. Heat up a wok, very hot, put a tiny bit of oil, it's non-stick wok. If you use less oil, you should use a little non-stick wok. Just a few drops of oil, healthy. And then put a tiny bit of garlic, minced garlic, stir fry. Make sure that you stir. Put the chicken in, don't let it sit for too long, otherwise the garlic or the ginger would burn. Put this chicken right in here. Oh, look at that sizzling sound. In the meantime, I am gonna Oh, stir. In the meantime, while you're doing this, let me show you why you are letting this to sear the meat and seal in the juice. You're gonna cut up all the other things. Here, look at this. I have this ingredient here. I have some fermented salted black bean, okay? And I rinse it so they're slightly rehydrated and also some of the extra, extra salt is removed. And also I have onion, bell pepper, and some wonderful asparagus, okay? Here, first of all, I'm gonna cut up some onion. Done. Put it right here. And then I can cut up some bell pepper. This is how you save time. Cut an angle like this. Cut an angle. Cut an angle like this. Set it aside. If you don't have time, huh? I will show you, okay? If you don't have time, you just simply go. Done. And then have some asparagus. Now a lot of time, everybody know this asparagus is wonderful. It's very easy to cook. You cut an angle like this. One, two, three. Cut an angle. Cut an angle. See that? One, two, three. You know why I cut an angle? When you cut an angle like this, you have a lot less fiber. You can snap off. You can boil them. You can steam them. You can microwave these asparagus. You can also stir fry them. If you boil them, all it takes is a few minutes. You can cut it in this angle too. It doesn't take too long to go. Oh, this is done, almost. And then you put all of these asparagus. Because I cut it in small pieces, I want to make sure 
if you're cooking a large portion of chicken, you know what? You can remove all of these chicken and then put the rest of the stuff in and stir fry the chicken and the asparagus and the bell pepper separately. But since we are doing such a um, wonderful one pot meal, we just put them all together and toss, toss. And then in the meantime, if you want to make it nice and exciting, look at this. Use a knife. Ah, look at this. Crush some of these. Look at that. Crush this and get the flavor out. Now you notice that I did not want to put in too early. If I put in too early, sometimes they get burned and get that induced that bitter taste. When this is done, I put this in. Black beans. This way I can put a lot more to give that wonderful flavor. Move, move. In the meantime, you gotta mix it and toss it and turn them around and make a sauce. And how are you gonna thicken your sauce? Look at this. I wanna show everybody how easy it is to thicken the sauce. Here, I have been using this cornstarch thickening liquid for many, many dishes. I wanna show you how easy it is to make this. You use one portion of cornstarch or tapioca starch, okay? With approximately three portions of water, two to three portions, mix them all up like this. Then you have a, what they call the cornstarch solution. And then you put them all together, okay? If you want to make more sauce, all you have to do is more home mix soup stock and more of these cornstarch solution. That means you can make as much sauce as you want. When it's done, we are going to put this over here. We are ready to serve right over here. And this is very easy to do. And toss, toss. Very easy, beautiful color. When it's done, shut, shut it off. Look at how beautiful this sizzling. Black bean chicken with fresh asparagus. <laughs> now. Curries are, are the one part wonder that you can make. Them are way ahead of time and put in the fridge and whenever you're hungry, you take it out. And then you can worry about putting it over rice, serve over rice or noodle or spaghetti, all kind of thing. I'm gonna show you a very simple, creamy Indian style chicken curry made with coconut milk. Here, I have a piece, a couple pieces, approximately four pieces, four whole pieces of chicken thigh. You can use chicken breast, you can use chicken thigh or chicken leg, it doesn't matter. And then I am gonna, oh, this is very secret, don't look. And here, I am gonna heat up my frying pan here. You, if you don't have a wok, you can use a regular frying pan like this. That means all, not all the food is cooked in a wok. You can cook frying pan, pots, you can cook all kind of things. First thing I want to do is, I am going to brown this chicken. Brown this to seal in the juice, okay? Brown this, seal in the juice. I'm going to do, use chopstick to do this. Put this right over here. Brown. Make sure you toss your foot around to allow uniform cooking. Now, of course, if you want to see yourself over the mirror, you should not stand right behind this steam, you say go, how are you doing? <laughs> Don't worry, move around, exercise, toss around. Why I'm browning this? Don't worry, I turn this, I brown every single piece evenly on both sides until they sear the meat and seal in the juice. And then I'm gonna cut up some vegetable. I have some potato. You can use all kind of potato. I cut an angle like this. Set it, cut it up, cut an angle like a roll cutting, okay? And then you can even use this kind of potato, okay? Cut it up, roll cutting, roll cutting, set it aside. And then I have some onion, cut it in squares. And then in the meantime, you notice that I am going to brown this, brown this, and put everything in if you want, okay? Put this in, put this in, in. and also I am going to put up some nice peeled baby carrot. You can buy in the supermarket, it's already peeled. They're very sweet. The small baby carrots are a lot sweeter 
than the regular carrot. Big carrot because they have a sweeter text, uh, taste and also because it's smaller, they don't have that fibrous core. So it tastes much better in your salad, in your stir fry, in your stew. The next thing I'm gonna show you is add all the spices. Let me show you all the spices I'm gonna put in. Look at that. We have all kinds of spices right here. I want everybody to pay attention. I have cardamom, I have cloves, I have cumin, and I have curry powder, and I have this Chinese dry tangerine peel, and also jalapeno, hot pepper. And then I want to quickly cut up a tiny bit of these dry tangerine peel, okay? And a tiny bit of garlic. If you don't have time, you cut a little piece and you just say, ah, done, it is done. And we put all of the spices right in here. Clove, put a tiny bit of clove, a tiny bit of cardamom, do it with style. Pick it up, go like that, put it right here. Pick it up, put it right here. And then, of course, jalapeno. And then the last thing you do is put some homemade soup stock. Wow, can you hear the sizzling sound? A tiny bit of fish sauce. Coconut milk. Plum sauce, like a chutney. And then, of course, a tiny bit of salt, a tiny bit of white pepper and black pepper. Mix them all up and you can let it simmer. Turn it down and let it simmer over low heat for approximately 15, 20 minutes or even longer. It depends on how much you cook. And when it's done, let me show you how beautiful. This is wonderful. Everybody should learn how to do this. When it's done, oh, this is hot and good. You serve right over here. Mm, look at this. Everybody can see that. This is a beautiful curry. Everybody, and a lot of people don't realize the orange color is the pigment, the sign of beta carotene. Beta carotene is the precursor of vitamin A, which has a preventive, a cancer preventative property and also improved vision. If you want to make it really nice, garnish it with Roll this up, look at this, R basil, cut it up, cut it up. I'm going to use this basil as a garnish and it looks really nice and we'll just put it right here and some right here and it looks beautiful and it's a wonderful curry. curry. Have you ever been a restaurant where the food is so remarkable, so unbelievable that you couldn't get enough? That is the way it is in one of the most innovative restaurants in Hong Kong. Let me show you what I mean. Exciting new dishes are being created in Hong Kong every day. The talented chef at the Golden Leaf restaurant has just made this beautiful co-appetizer dish out of, you never guess, pig's ears, and marinated jellyfish. What is new with shark's fin? The chef have created this unique hot and sour shark's fin soup. A bold move for a classically trained Cantonese chef. Here is a wonderfully imaginative cooking concept. A meal in one with a stack of steam power. Lift the lid of this triple deck bamboo steamer and you'll find a steaming shrimp mu siu mai with shark's fin and crab roll. In the middle tier is another course, stuffed crab crawl. Let's look at the last steamer. It is asparagus tips with napa cabbage and yin nan ham. That's my favorite kind of one dish meal. Three dishes. The Go Leaf restaurant in Hong Kong is really on the cutting edge of cooking as an art form. The next thing I want to show you is one of the most popular cooking one pot meal in Japan. I call this shabu shabu. Very much the same thing as the Mongolian hot pot or the Cantonese fire pot. 
Everybody in Japan serves these. Here, I want to show you all the ingredients that you need for shabu shabu. Why I am showing all the ingredients? I'm heating up this pot already with a broth. Wow, that's wonderfully hot. Let me show you this. I have tofu. Everybody know soybean tofu. I'm going to put a couple pieces of tofu here. I have scallop. This is the type of thing, just like fondue. You cook and you eat at the same time. As you cook along, you all sit around and you eat. And this is, oh, snow pea, vegetable and seafood. Enoki mushroom, shrimp, and then, of course, I have shiitake mushroom. Put it all around here. And also have some interesting baby bamboo shoot. The whole thing. Put it over here and also here. In this country, salmon is popular, so we'll also put some salmon right here. This is going to be wonderful. Now, I want to show you and talk a little bit about how do you make this broth. Very, very interesting. All you have to do is start with some water, some rice wine, and also a tiny bit of sugar. And most important, use this dashi, dashi. A, that means a dash of these and a dash of that. This is actually made from the dry bonito, a uh, dry fish freak powder. I put, make it even stronger, put a tiny bit more of this dashi, a tiny bit of rice wine, extra rice wine, and you're ready. Now, when you're ready, the great thing about this is, as you go along and cook all of these wonderful seafood and vegetable, the broth become stronger and stronger and more intense and tastier when it's all ready. You boil some noodle and you put the broth right in here. This is so delicious. And then pick up a few things that you have just cooked right in here. A piece of snow pea and a piece of shiitake mushroom and my favorite, a piece of shrimp. And I dip this in into this tangy lemon sauce. And you know what? I am going to serve this to myself. Mmm, <laughs> well, delicious. <laughs> the shabu shabu was absolutely delicious. And I recommend you to make it at home. Finally, let me take you back to the China of my childhood. The dishes I love the most are those wonderful comfort food, like this whole poached Cantonese chicken served over a plate of rice or noodle. Here, you look at this. I have a whole chicken, okay? You clean it up, <laughs> wonderful chicken, and then you gotta rub some seasoning. I have a nice, a tiny bit of garlic, rub it inside. Tiny bit of ginger and tiny bit of salt, okay? Rub it inside, put a tiny, tiny bit of rice wine, okay? And then you gotta rub it because in order to have this perfect chicken, you gotta make sure the chicken is nice and tender. How can you do it? You rub it and massage this. <laughs> Marvelous. That's you tenderize, make this whole chicken more relaxed. And then when it's done, make sure allow it to marinate overnight or at least two hours. Unbelievable, it marinate. Good, and then I put in the big pot of boiling liquid right here. Water. Ah, look at this. <laughs> Pull in the right direction. And then I also to make the flavor, the broth more flavorful. I have some ginger slices of ginger. I put it right here. And some green onion. I just break it in half. I put it right here. And this way, I am going to bring this to a boil. Once I bring it to a boil, I'm going to let it calm down a little bit and to simmer. And then I'll let it cook for about five to 10 minutes. Low heat. And then I would just turn it off and cover the whole thing up and let it soak in big pot of boiling water for approximately half an hour to let the heat permeate into the whole thing, okay? And then I'm gonna show you quickly how to make a dressing, make a sauce that you serve this poached whole Cantonese chicken. Here, I have a little saucepan and I put some oil. This is the most important thing. I heat up some oil, okay? You gotta need a little bit more oil. Heat up the oil right 
here. And then when the oil is nice and hot, you put a tiny bit of ginger and garlic, okay? The oil is almost hot. You put the ginger and garlic and a tiny bit of, a lot of ginger, okay? And some green onion. Put it right here. Look at that. Very simple. And a tiny, tiny bit of sesame seed oil if you want. Not much. And then when the oil is hot enough, it's very, very hot. And while I'm waiting the oil to get hot, you know what I'm going to do? I am going to take up, remove this cutting board because I just touched the raw chicken for safety reasons. And I am going to take this because I have just boiled up another piece of poached chicken. Look at that. Drip, make sure they drain out of this pot. Get all the liquid out. I'm going to show you how to cut up this whole thing. In no time to put the whole thing together. Okay. Look at this. Wipe this out a little bit so when you cut it, they won't fly all over the place. And then remove these, cover this up, and then we are ready. Now, a lot of time in Chinese restaurants or stores, in Chinese delis, right before they do it, they use a tiny bit of sesame seed oil to brush it all over so they can hang it. That's why it's a lot of time you can see, it. you go to a Chinese Chinatown, you see them, they hang all over the place. Now the oil is hot enough, so we shut off the oil, and I want everybody listen to this and see this, okay? Hot oil. Listen. Can you see that? This, it will be the sauce we're going to use to put it right on top of the chicken. We set this aside and put it over here. We are going to serve, okay? You want to make it hot, you can also add a tiny of jalapeno. Now this is exciting. I'm going to put this right over here, okay? Everybody, look at this. First, I cut this up. This, I cut this up. Put this right over here. This is the wing, okay? This is not much meat. That's why I don't want to bother because I'm going to serve it to my honored guests. When I eat it by myself, I keep the whole thing. Look at that. Cut it up like that. And then all you have to do is cut this up. Okay. This is put it right here. And then look at this. This normal in Chinese restaurant, they cut this up into three more pieces. But in this particular case, we don't have to worry. Cut it up in half because this is not much in here, and then cut it up in half, and then you have a big piece of this and a big piece of thigh. Then you cut up this one, two, three, four. Trim this a little bit and put it right over here. Look at that. Eh, very simple. And then you cut this up, cut this up, and put this right over here. And then you line up the whole thing, put the whole thing together like that, and like that. And of course, you do not want to waste this particular piece of head right here. And then serve <laughs> wonderful thing with this. And this is what you're going to do, a Cantonese-style poached chicken. <laughs> One part meals are simple and basic. But they can also be the most satisfying. So join the One Pot Cooking Club. Our slogan is just as delicious with a lot less dishes to worry about. Till next time, keep a chicken in every pot. And remember, if Yan can cook, so can you. Judge in.